Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome back to the bioinformatics lecture series. So today we are going to talk about uh, uh, an interesting tool for integrative genomic analysis for cancers. Uh, it's called the CBAL portal. So the CBAL portal is a web tool. Uh, it is actually developed by the Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Institute. Um, and the website is cbalportal.org. At the same time, CBAL Portal is actually an open source software project. So that allows us to also install local instances. And uh, actually, I would like to mention for the Precision House uh, initiative, we have installed CBAL Portal locally on our Hyperman's Computing Center. Um, and that actually allows us to also share and uh, visualize data from uh, ourselves. So also I would like to mention the CBAL portal website actually during the past few weeks, they have been also organizing some webinars. And the webinars, if you click on here, and what you can see is they actually provide the introduction to CBAL portal video and they continue to talk about different functionalities. The videos that has been happened allowed uh, available here, and there are actually multiple slides set in the model. So, uh, so that's today. I will not give a very extensive introduction because uh, I think you can learn much more by looking into uh, listening to their webinar and also looking at their. Um, slides. So what I'm going to do is going to talk a little bit about background and do a quick introduction and a demo for CBAL portal. Once we talk about CBAL portal, actually we need to start with TCGA. TCGA, many of you already know, is the Cancer Genome Atlas Program at uh, National Cancer Institute. It started actually almost 15 years ago, it started back in 2006, the first set of data released is for glioblastoma. Uh, and so far they have curated data for 33 different cancers. And this is different with some of the ongoing uh, large projects which are focused on genomic data only. For TCGA, it's actually integrative genomics project so not only they generate DNA sequencing data, such as some of the panel, for some panels or whole exome sequencing or whole genome sequencing, uh, but they also generate data for transcriptomics using RNA sequencing, uh, methylation using the Illumina chip, uh, and uh, microRNA sequencing. At the same time, they actually provide uh, very intense clinical information, uh, survival information, and even pathological report and histopathology images. Uh, if you want to know what are the data cancers has been selected for TCGA, there is a list here, TCGA cancers selected for study. And he actually gives a um, criteria for selection. But the one important thing about TCGA is at the beginning, the goal was to select about 500, at least 500 patients for each selected disease. Turns out for some cancers like breast cancer, this so far has almost uh, 1,100 or 1,200 patients. Um, for some rare cancers, they don't have that many. So here is a list. Out of the 33 cancers, only the AML, acute amyloid leukemia, is a liquid tumor. The rest are all solid tumors. Uh, and for every data set, when the data were first released, and they will publish a paper for the integrative analysis in some high impact journal like Cell, Nature, Cancer Cell, and such. I specifically would like to mention, actually, IU, the Indiana University, actually contributed one data set, that is Thymoma. And uh, if you look at it, this is the paper published um, about two years ago, led by Dr. Pat Lear, who is a world leader in Samoma, uh, in Samoma treatment and research. 
and with the first author being Milan Renovich. And yeah, so this is the information about the paper, Milan Renovich and uh, Pat Lear and along with the team. So just would like to mention, we actually, I, I use school of medicine actually contributed pretty well uh, to, the, uh, to the project. So when TCG first started back in 2006 and 2007, the way to access data is actually through a TCG data portal, and it is very cumbersome. So what you have to do is you have to find a bioinformatician and to help you to select a cancer type and select a patient, select the file type. And when you download the whole thing, usually sometimes it can take hours and days, and then you have to do all the analysis to extract the gene that you are interested in. Nowadays, if you want to download data, you still can. The data actually has been migrated into another place called NCI Genomic Data Commons. So GDC in short. And so GDC is actually the central portal for managing genomics data studies. And now if you click on it, what you can see is TCG is actually one of the largest studies. They actually so far has 15 larger studies in here. And uh, I'd like to mention a few other studies besides TCGA. One of them is CPTAC. They start with clinical proteomics. And so the idea is they actually selected a few data sets as few symbols, cancer symbols, usually in the scale of hundreds, and carried out a shotgun mass pack for to characterize the prote proteomics, proteome for those patient samples. Very interestingly, for a few data sets, especially for the initial data sets like colorectal cancers, breast cancers, some of the samples actually shared with TCGA. So for those patients, not only you have their proteomics data, you also have their genomics data generated from TCGA. That allow us to do a lot of interesting studies. Besides that, for example, if you're interested in multiple myeloma, the MMRF data, Multiple Myeloma Research Foundation data is available. If you're interested in pediatric cancer, you got the target data. So this is a great resource for us to look into the data. And for example, if I select the TCGA, what you can see here, it, it gives you the information. For breast cancer, there's almost 1,100 patients, and those are different files. Um, and if you want to know how large is the file, let's look into this view. Uh, for example, if we talk about the colorectal cancer. Colorectal cancer, so far they have, from this line chart you can see is 461 patients, among which 460 of them actually have the sequencing file. 459 of them have gene expression file. 433 of them have single nucleated variants called. And uh, then you can go down this route and uh, eventually there's 15,000 files for this study alone, and the total file size is 27.47 terabytes. Clearly, this is not something you want to immediately download to your own computer and to do something with it. Actually, downloading after you download the 15,000 files, it's going to be a nightmare for you to actually manually or trying to oh, just to organize it. So that is actually what triggered the development of CVAL portal. So now let's go to CVAL portal. CVAL portal actually nowadays have the TCGA data in there. And the one thing I'd like to mention, because TCGA has, is not just for one cancer, it's for 33 different cancers. There actually was a, a working group called Pan Cancer Working Group. They did a very interesting studies. Last year, there was six high impact, 10 high impact papers last year in journals like Cell, Nature Genetics, and such, and specifically to compare, for example, mutation landscapes or pathways in different cancers. Yeah, because that is what we know. Different cancers, they behave differently, and they are involved in different genes. But then maybe there's some similarity between cancers in proximity 
locations and such. So there is a pen cancer study, and they have processed all the TCGA data in a standard way. So this is sometimes is a good data set for us to use. But the way you can select is you can select the pen cancer studies, but that is for the entire TCGA. But there are also other pen cancer studies. For example, the Sloan Kettering Memorial Institute, so um, MSK, they have their impact study for which they have done gene sequencing for tens of thousands of patients, and they actually made the result available. At the same time, there are you know, other data sets you get interested in NCI 60 cell lines. There's some gene expression data or genomic data available. Um, and here you can see, for example, even for adrenal gland, which is a very rare cancer, they only have 92 samples. Uh, this, there's still a TCG study for that. And there's two versions of data in there. I and mean, sometimes people ask you to say which version you want to use. Uh, sometimes it's up to you, but one thing I would like to mention, Firehose is a, used to be a place that we download TCG data, but now it's a stop to maintain it. So it's called a legacy data. So pan cancer data might be the more consistent data you can use. And you can browse through all the data sets. So as you can see, for example, for colorectal uh, cancer, and we got the different versions of TCGA data. And partially put in there is also for reproduction, uh, reproducibility uh, purpose, right? So the TCGA data for colorectal cancer originally was published in 2012, which is very early in nature. At the time, there was only 276 patients. But in the fire hose, and there are actually much more 640 samples. But when it's come to the pan cancer study, because of the different selection criteria and such, only 594 samples were included. So that is another thing, very important thing is when you try to use those data sets, is make sure you need to know which version, what's the source, and what's the meta information, what's the meta information associated with them. But here you can actually do multiple things with CBL portal. CBL portal actually allow you to at least the three levels of studies. At the highest level is you can actually compare things among different cancers. Then the next is you can focus on specific cancer. And eventually you can actually visualize information about the individual patients. So we'll very quickly go through some of those functionalities. But the detailed functionality, please refer to the video on their webinar. Um, theoretically, you can actually select all the pan cancer studies, like 33 of them, and uh, then do some query. Uh, I have tried, it says it's going to take a few seconds. On my slow network, uh, it took more than 10 minutes, so I'm not going to show it here. But instead, let's select, say, three different cancers to compare with. For example, colon rectal cancers, you can select in here. And, uh, breast cancer, and the glioblastoma. So three different cancers. And you can explore it, or you can actually query. So let's say, let's first of all query something. So the way you can query is type in the gene names. And one thing is remember is uh, there is actually a limit on how many genes you can query. The limit is 100. You can, you're not allowed to carry more than 100 genes. I think partially for computing uh, purpose, partially for privacy protection, because theoretically those are actually mutation information for individual patients. So uh, there is a limit on how many genes you are allowed to carry. For example, if you are interested in P53, P53, right? You may say, I'm interested in KRAS. I'm also interested in KAPC. Then I'm interested in KI67. You type in KI67, it says invalid gene symbols, and there is no such thing. If you click here, it disappears. Why that? KI67 is what we call the gene, but it's actually the official symbol is MKI67. Then if you say, I'm also interested in a gene called KIA0101. And then it shows, this time it shows something different, say, 
we don't have KR0101, but there was there is another gene called PCLAF, used to be called KR0101. You say yes, you click on it, it gives you that gene. And uh, let's do two more collagen 1A1, right? collagen 1A2. Say those are the one, two, three, four, those are seven genes I'm interested. Use some is a query. And so since, since, since we are actually comparing between three different cancers, it's going to take a while. It's a, they're actually searching the data for more than 200, 2,000 patients, right? So it's actually uh, going to take a while to show up. At the meantime, I would like to mention um, I already, since just to, for the time to save, for the sake of saving time, I already opened a few other views uh, for different cancers. So this is actually a sample from the colorectal cancer group. So while we are waiting for the other one to finish the query, and so you are actually can you can actually visualize for individual patients. In this time, it's a colorectal pain cancer patient, and it has so-called barcode. So the patient ID is TCGAEF-5830. That's the, essentially, every symbol associated with this barcode is from this patient. There's possibly to be non-cancer control, there's possibly to be cancer tissue, and the, this patient is a male, when diagnosed was 54 years old, and with all the clinical information. If you really want to know the clinical information of the patient, you can click on the clinical data. And here's what you see. The patient is living, the stage is T4A, um, and uh, how old is the patient, and what's the date. Um, please notice, actually, so for some of the detailed dates, they may be scrambled. They actually may intentionally shift it by a few months or something, so it's not the, you cannot use to say, I want to correlate that information uh, with, say, in which month a patient like to get what cancer. No, you cannot do that because they actually, they will maintain the age to be accurate, but it's sometimes to scramble the data a little bit. Um, then you have the sample information and based on the person report and such. Uh, and if you go into details of the actual clinical data, you actually will also have the treatment information. Um, and you may say, okay, I don't know really how the patient been been diagnosed. I want to look at the pathology report. For some of the patients, they actually have the pathology report for an individual patient available. In this case, they have to hide blackout. It's actually just four tables. Sometimes of the patient, you actually see detailed, even handwritten report. Uh, so in this case, they just a few tables talking about what's the tissue, and uh, what's the stage, diagnosis, uh, is there surgery, and such information. Cellular the cellularity of the tumor is 70%. And if you say, no, I really don't know what's about this thing, I just want to look at the pathology image. Actually, you can. You can click on this tab. It's going to take a while to load. Um, it actually will show from they actually this they link to another website called Cancer Digital Slide Archive. Oh, this actually I'm sorry, this is not a this is not colorectal cancer patient. This is another uh, I I don't know really what disease is this, but it's another type of cancer. And this patient actually have two slides available. And one thing is you can, for example, you want to take a look at the histopathology slide of the patient. You can zoom in, you can drag. So I want to take a look of the, uh, I want to take a look of the tumor. You can zoom in. Zoom in. Zoom in. Zoom in. Zoom in. So, and uh, then you can really browse it. And this actually tells you where you're looking at. And uh, you can personally tell if this might be a fibroblast or maybe something else. Since I'm not familiar with this type of cancer, I cannot really tell what kind of cancer this is. But this is very helpful for you to understand the individual patient.
You can also go to the summary for the patient. Now you can see, okay, we know this patient has 70 mutations. And for example, this patient has KRAS mutation, it's a protein change mutation. Uh, and then what's the consequence of this protein change? They're actually knowledge base you can click on. In this specific mutation, there are four knowledge base annotated for this mutation. And the strongest one is from this called Uncle KB. It's from the Uncle KB, which is actually a knowledge base developed by Sloan Catherine. And it's a level four mutation. That means it's a conformed cancer related mutation with actually a drug targeting it. That's the most strongest evidence. Sometimes you see two or three, or in this case, for example, is there is Yes, TP53 mutation might be unlikely to be oncogenic. There are not much uh, more evidence. Um, level of evidence might be others, and uh, there is no clear drug for that. There is also other knowledge base. So this is from another consortium called Civic. Civic is a, a kind of open source crowdsourcing Notation. So there may be more information at the same time as uh, the level of evidence may not be as strong. And this is another link showing you all the links that are about this mutation. And this is from the 3D hotspot uh, talking about the potentially the effects of this mutation in the, um, I mean, in, in the population. And in this case, it's a misdance mutation. A little frequency is essentially changing in one copy. Uh, and it doesn't really change the gene expression level. So it's a still median. Um, and it showed up in actually about 40% of the patients in this cohort has. And it's got, also got a notation in another database called Cosmic. Same thing, you could look into the copy number variance, and there's much more pages that you can take a look. Also, you want to say if I'm, you're interested in individual levels of patients, you can take a look too. This show you different crops of numbers and with the mutations, and uh, then you can go into details uh, about those mutations. So this is the essential uh, summary of the patient level of viewer. Let's go back to original query. So remember we queried for three, different cancers. And three different cancers, it actually has about 2,200 patients. So this is a view, what we call uncle print. Uncle print shows in that case, for example, for P53, because if you zoom in, here is a zoom out view. If you zoom in, you will see a lot of bars. Each bar is one patient. So for example, for, for this patient on the leftmost, this patient actually has a mutation in TP53, no mutation in KRAS, has a mutation in APC, but no mutation in other genes. And for the type of mutation, this black dot on APC means it's a truncating mutation. And on TP53, this green, dark green dot is a missense mutation. So that way you can easily link not only to um, compare to see who has what mutation, but also link to other profiles information. So, and you can zoom out. It become, so because here it's so zoomed out, you're not only looking at one patient, you're looking at two patients. And but if you really zoom in, you can select one patient and you can actually click on here and go into the individual patient mode as we have seen before. In that case, you can also look at clinical data, the tissue image, and such. And also you can look at the cancer type summary. For example, in this case, it says in the colorectal cancer data set, for the seven genes we queried, about 70, about 79% uh, of the or the colorectal cancer patients in this study, they have mutations. And among which 72.39 uh, mutations, and then a smaller, much smaller percentage is actually amplification, and some people with deletion, some people with multiple alterations. 
But uh, the amount of the percentage of patients with mutation in those selected genes is much smaller. It's only 28% in glial blastoma. So you can do those kind of like comparison, or you can focus on individual genes. And there's also you can to say, look at say, for patient with those mutations, do they have a difference in terms of survival with the rest of the, uh, with the patient without mutation in that group? So it's actually going to generate the kaplan meyer curves. In this case, it's a very strongly patient with mutations in any of those selected genes, seven genes, and versus the patient without mutation. But it's actually become interesting that might be even counterintuitive but because in this case, it turns out they actually live the longer. <laughs> so that may worth some investigation. That actually also used this comparison function. Um, then you can look at the mutation status, you can look at the pathways and such. So I'm going to go back to modify the query to focus on an individual study. For example, now this time we want to study, um, say, kidney cancer. You go to the kidney and you select the data set that we only select the renal clear cell carcinoma. And uh, in PCGA, let's select that. And uh, then we will change us some change some genes, maybe take out the APC. Um, yeah, I don't, if there is any other genes that we have people are interested, we can say, or we can, yeah, just let's keep those six genes and we can submit the query. This case generally, oh, actually, I'm um, sorry. So I have to stop this because I forgot to clear what I selected before. Okay, here they were selected. selected. Clear cell carcinoma. One thing is you may want to say, I want to explore the selected studies. And you can, it actually will give you the summary of the data. So first you can, we can take a look at that. So we just shows you, okay, we have about 512 patients, and this is the overall survival, this is a disease-free survival. We are not differentiating that. That's why you only see one curve, not two curves. Um, and among those, turns out a large number of them, 41% of them has VHL mutations, 38% uh, of them has PBR M1 mutations. Um, so you can go through like this. At the same time, certain patients have fusion genes, the frequency is pretty low, and uh, you can have the distribution of the patients with fraction genome altered mutation count. Um, and other information. And the thing is you can actually change the panel. You can say, I'm really interested in patient with 11P and I want to put it on the top. You can, oh, by the way, you can actually download this as a table of the information um, and you can move it. So you can rearrange. This gives you a much better information about what the genes are important. And uh, it's more prevalent of mutations and such. But then let's go back to the query. You select the study and query some genes. For example, we query P53, which is TP53, we query um, VHL, and we carry, query PBRM1, we query for collagen 1A1, collagen Y2. Okay, we query five genes for this 
study. So it's a smaller set with 354 samples. And the reason is not every patient have all the files. So we focus on a smaller set. Um, and now you can see, actually, if you zoom out a little bit, you can see all the patients. And then you can start to look, do the analysis. In this case, only 3% of the patients actually have PT3 mutations, but almost half of them have mutations in VHL. And uh, so now you can start to see other things. And so this cancer cell primary mutual exclusivity. So this is an interesting notion. It's essential to see uh, any of the significant mutation status for gene have significant overlap or significantly not overlapped. Because sometimes the idea is if there are genes in the same pathway, they don't need to be both mutated. So sometimes mutual exclusivity actually is an indicator of genes might be in the same pathway. In this case, we don't have genes with very strong uh, mutual exclusivity. Then you can take a look at the plots. For example, you can see, you wonder if it's the genes you are interested, their copy number variance status, say shallow deletion, deployed in amplification, uh, are strongly associated with gene special level. Sometimes they are, sometimes they don't. Uh, for example, in this case, if you say, uh, you know, look at for VHL, you can see there's some relationship. Um, but for collagen, by one, the actually copy number varies the status and the gene accession level is not very strongly correlated. But you can also look at the relationship, not in this case, not in the just a summarized copy number status, but directly looking at the measurement of the copy number. And for example, in this case, we look at the PB and L1. And the correlation between the copy number values and the gene expression levels um, is actually about, experiment correlation is about 0.39. So there's some correlation, it's not that strong. But the collagen is very low. There are no correlation <laughs> almost between the gene expression level and copy number. You could also look at the correlation between different genes. In this case, you select one gene here and you select another gene, say collagen 1A2. Suddenly, you see some very strong correlation. The correlation coefficient is like 0 0.94, 0 0.98, depending on which one you use. And essentially, we know collagen 1A1, collagen 1A2, they have to be both present. So their gene expression is highly co-regulated. And that's what we observe the co-expression actually confirmed it. But how about the collagen 1A1 and VHL? VHL? There is essentially no correlation. The correlation is almost a zero. So they're, they're really independent in that case. We can look at mutation status of individual patients. So this is what we call lollipop plot. So for this patient, for, for the status is, those are the ones for P53 shown, the mutations shown in P53. And you could look at other, uh, say, VHL, and there's more mutations. So many patients, they have the same mutation. Um, there's more mutations. And for PBMR1, and this is the mutations with a different frequency. So you can actually go through this um, if you're interested to look for specific mutations. You can see which genes they show for strong correlation with the gene that you are interested in. Because they're doing the calculation, so it actually takes a while to show. Yes. So those are the genes that show strong correlation in terms of correlation uh, gene expression profiles with TP53. But how about VHL? Yeah, the, the calculation takes takes a, a while. So that's why you may need to want to make sure you have, you know, a good network and so that you can find out things fast. Okay, I don't know why it's not showing up. It's, 
I guess it's just as well. I mean, this is something I think you can check more. Uh, also, you can compute to see what are the what are the survival difference between the patient without the mutation and with mutations, as we have seen. So they use the survival and comparison functions. If you say, I don't want to check about collagen one one, you can cross it out. Collagen one two, you can cross it out. TB fifty three, you can cross it out. And whichever, or you can cross it out. So each one they will give you a different chart and show you the p-value between the two groups, and you can see if that's of interest. This is overall survival. Sometimes they have information of disease-free survival, or progression-free survival, or some other information. For the disease-specific, that's usually focused on uh, just for this cancer alone when you're doing multiple comparisons. Um, you can also look at the copy number variance segments and pathways. Also, the pathway, unfortunately, could always get screen. So pathway now they use multiple, um, they use multiple databases. And it actually show you the notes, it also show you the percentage of patients with those mutations. So with, with, with mutations. But in this case, you know, for the other seven genes, the six genes, uh, they don't, there's no clearly marked pathways from the database they use. Um, but there's different pathways, uh, data source you can actually select. Finally, for some of the select data set, you can actually download. Download into the table for individual patients or for the selected cohort for the specific five genes that we selected, you can actually download. Those could be downloaded as a tab tabulated form or some uh, in different um, format. So you can explore about that. So this is the generally about about portal. Um, I would like to mention, as we have seen, for individual patients, you can look at tissue image. Uh, and what the, the way they do is they actually link to another website called the Cancer Digital Slide Archive, which is very rich. Uh, you can actually select for all the TCGA images that have an image. For example, if you are interested in breast cancer, you can click on here. They have the images for 868 patients. Actually, each patient, some patient may have multiple images. Um, there's so-called tissue image. I say the image right before they do the genomics for the tissue that they do is the genomic sequencing, or the diagnosis image. I say the images they are actually used to diagnose the patients. And now, if you can dive into those, if you're interested, and you can start clearly see some of the epithelial regions. Uh, with the stroma region, right? And uh, possibly if you uh, have pathology background, you could also maybe identify things like lymphocyte, infiltrating lymphocytes uh, and such. Uh, and actually you can mark a region. If you have a region that you are interested in, you can mark it. Um, there's other functionalities still being developed. So this is a tool developed by Emory University and Northwestern University. Okay, so that ends uh, my lecture. And uh, I just want to make sure uh, you know, you can check out the functionalities of the CBAL portal and other related tools from their website and their own video. Thank you very much.